and as we can see, the exploit ran, and yeah, we have a session, ChatGPT codex connected back to our infrastructure. So let's look at the session details. Uh, it's running as root. Yeah, makes sense. So let's drop into a shell. Uh, here we go. And we are in the workspace of the agent, and we can see the source code that we enlisted. It even downloaded the GitHub issue we saw. And let's look at the environment variables. And yeah, here we go. We have the defined environment variable. So we have a full compromise. Hello, so today we're going to talk about ChatGPT Codex and how to uh, turn it into a zombie via an indirect prompt injection. Specifically, we're going to look into a feature that OpenAI introduced, the common dependency allow list. And let me explain what that is and also give you a little bit of an overview of ChatGPT Codex first. So here you can see the UI where you have ChatGPT Codex and you can give it sort of programming task, you know, tell it what to develop and which GitHub issues to fix and so on. How you set this up is you create an environment, which is sort of your virtual machine that then ChatGPT Codex is working in. And as part of that setup, initially there was actually no internet access at all. It was only during the setup process, like the configuration step, uh, but at runtime there was no internet access. And that changed recently. So there is now an option called agent internet access. You can turn that on, by default it's off. So by default it's actually, it is actually quite secure. But you can turn this on and there's a couple of options, right? First is to have no internet connectivity. Then there's something called the common dependencies. And the third one is unrestricted access. So the third one, of course, right, is very dangerous. The second one is sort of this middle ground where OpenAI defined a list of 71 domains that are allow listed to add runtime. And so this is what we're going to look at a lot more closely now. Not visible in this screenshot is actually you can fine grained control, like you can set exactly which domains you want to allow list, which is really good actually. But let's look at the common dependencies. So as I said, uh, there's a large list of domains that are allowed at runtime. And I wanted to see, look through this list and I, my goal was to find one domain where I could run arbitrary code to sort of have, a, make ChatGPT visit my domain and then kind of download malware and, you know, establish full command and control. And the one that popped out immediately to me was azure.com. Why is that the case? Because within your Azure portal in the configuration, you can create a virtual machine and you can give it a DNS name. And I knew that that DNS name could end in azure.com. You can see here, I created a name spyware and it ends in azure.com as a DNS name. So this should allow us to bypass uh, this common dependency allow list to do something malicious. And in order to demonstrate this via prompt injection, I created this GitHub issue, which is basically investigating uh, why some external resources wouldn't load in this project. And the idea here is really just have repro steps that trick the agent into downloading the malware binary with curl. Um, then uh, I call the downloaded tool connectivity, change the executable permissions to make it executable and then just run that malware binary, the connectivity tool, so to speak. And the idea is that this is some form of debug task that the agent should fulfill. Good. And then the next step was right, just pointing ChatGPT Chet Chet codex to that GitHub issue. As you can see here, check out this GitHub issue. And then this is all you would see as a user, right? It just goes off for four and a half minutes. You don't really know what it's doing. Uh, you can in click to see the details and observe what it's doing, which is really interesting. But you would have no idea if the machine is compromised or not while this whole process is running. And uh, interesting side effect here too. You can see here these boxes with, hey, yo, I'm co-pirate. And the end with Johan was here, trust no AI. Uh, that's actually an accident because I did have a, another prompt injection demo in that same repro. Uh, repo which was a GitHub custom instructions. So these two messages actually are coming from the GitHub custom instructions file. So unrelated to the actual GitHub issue, which is the, the zombie attack that we are talking about here. So how does this look while the agent is running? So here I have my command and control server and there were no sessions initially. And then when ChatGPT uh, codex looks at the GitHub issue and tries to kind of debug, downloads the connectivity tool, then it actually really connects to my command and, command and control server, which you can see here, and then we can run shell commands and we have full remote access to the ChatGPT codex environment for that repository. 
And what does full access, access actually mean? Right? This means we can look at environment variables and so on, look at all the source code. Uh, the machine would be joined on a corporate network or VPN or something, right? That would be really dangerous. And here you can also see it really tried to connect many, many times. So it just like kept trying to connect because it, it couldn't succeed and it timed out at like 40 seconds or something. And uh, yeah, this is sort of the result that we have full remote code execution now, command and control. And as a demo I had here, an environment variable, uh, trust no AI that I was looking at. Of course, I just closed this to OpenAI and I kind of, because OpenAI asked for feedback even on the common dependency allow list. So I provided this information, but they didn't uh, think this warrants any kind of product change or anything like that. Uh, there's a warning in, in the documentation and also in the product that, you know, enabling internet access is very dangerous. And so you really should decide by yourself which domains you want to allow uh, ChatGPT 